Hello, it's Ralphie Dude here. Uh, today we will be going over how to do the track AR setup as well as your zoom view for your DCS modules. I said I wouldn't give you my profile and that still holds true. So today I'm just going to teach you how to set it up. Even though you could have just YouTubed it or Googled it and you would have gotten the same exact information. But hey, you know, let's do this. First thing you're going to want to do is go and get the software. So track AR, spelt that wrong, but whatever. Here we are. Support and down software. Get the latest one. 5.22 is the one I'm using. Hasn't been updated since 2013, it looks like. Get that installed, and then get cracking with it. This should be the window, similar to what you will be greeted when you first open it up. Um, first thing to note is up here, the track target. Uh, by default, I believe the track clip will be selected. Uh, I am going to be doing this with the track clip pro. The track clip will have a very similar, if not exactly the same procedure. Uh, but depending on what you have, just select the correct one. Uh, we're not going to use the motion control just yet, so leave that as a last thing to do. But instead, we're just going to work with the graph. Uh, the other things you need to be aware of are the three icons on top. So the first icon to the very left will just show you the graph of how you're moving your head around and what values they're at. The second one is the one we're going to be using because you can get both the graph and what's actually happening, while the third one will just give you the right side of the screen. Before anything else, let's change our display to the camera view, and this will display the three LED sensors that the track AR sees. So as you can see, I have it pretty close to the center. Now, depending on your monitor, its height, and where your sensor versus your actual LED lights are, you will have this in a very weird location. It could be somewhere over here. So as you can tell from over here, when you start changing and moving your head around, you're going to hit some pretty dead spots and you're going to need to fix those. So the first thing you might want to do is set yourself up and the track air sensor and everything else so that these lights are as close to the center as possible. And this is pretty much as center as I'm going to get it. Move my head up and down. As you can see, when you tilt your head down, this is the only location that is a problem area. It loses track of one or more LEDs, and it no longer can track. So, this is one of the things we are going to fix. On the left-hand side, uh, I am not quite sure if you're going to be greeted with a default profile or not. You will have, I think, a few options, but I'm going to work with the default. And the default should have some sort of curvature set here. How are we going to work with this? Well. Let's go back to our regular 3D view. I'm going to make sure that as I'm doing this, as you see, my camera is not centered right now. It is off center. My head is in a weird position. So I'm going to push my head to the neutral position and I'm going to hit the center. And now I'm centered and everything's okay. So let's move my head up. Up is fine. Left is not so fine. I want to make sure I hit at least 180 degrees. This is about as comfortable as my head will move to the left, and I'd like to be at 180 degrees or just beyond it, so we're going to fix that. And to the right, this is about my most comfortable position, and I'm reaching just 180 degrees or beyond, so my right is okay. And my down seems to be fine, but I do know it's problematic, and I think it loses LED track somewhere around here. So I'm going to increase my down a little bit, perhaps. And let's see my roll. My roll seems to be fine, but I like to get more roll out of it. As you can see on the right side, you have a raw values versus in-game values. The way it usually does it is you roll your head about 26 degrees and it'll roll your head about 30 degrees in-game. So it amplifies the movement so you don't actually have to roll your head beyond 90 degrees and snap your neck. All right, let's get started. On the axis side, you will see that you will have yaw, pitch, and roll, and we're going to start fixing those up. Now, I don't really use anything beyond the one-to-one -one or the smooth uh, templates, but uh, essentially one-to-one -one works for me. Uh, I haven't really played around with them. I always leave it just a one-to-one -one and I'll leave, it at, uh, leave it at that. When you start changing these values around, you want to make sure your mirror is either checked on or checked off. Uh, with mirror turned on, when you move one value, the other value on the opposite side will move with it, whereas with this checked off, I can just use one and this one will stay the same. So, let's see. We said our left needs to be increased, right? Now, as we push our head to the left over here, this is about as comfortable 
as I'm going to get. 145 degrees is I'm getting maximum. So right here, where you see this red line, I'm going to increase this value. My mirrors are off. So that it pushes itself to at least 180 degrees. Now I'm not going to go beyond that, because in order to go beyond that, I really need to stretch my neck. But I'm actually going to calm this down a little bit. Let's see. There's 90. There's 180. This is actually perfect. Let's see. One more time. Yeah. I think I can calm this down a little bit more, actually. Wonderful. Am I right just in comparison? Okay, it's fine. So this is kind of the curvature that I like for yaw, and I'm set here. Okay, moving on. Pitch. So I'm going to pitch up. Pitch up is great. Pitch down is also great. I'm not actually getting those LEDs disappearing on me. But this is about as far as I'd like to go with my head down. And I'd like to go all the way down to 90. As you can see, that's right here. I'm going to check off mirror. I'm going to increase that just to go beyond 90 degrees. And boom. That's it. Flat out. Like that. Done. Moving on. My roll. Okay. For roll, I'm actually going to leave mirrors on. And about my maximum values are here. And it's probably going to be around here. Yep. So what I'm going to do is increase these. And I can leave the mirrors on because it's about the same for my left and right. Perfect. Now I can get better roll sensation out of it. And that's it. Quite literally. We're done here. But um, just another thing to note. You see how the graph goes and dips down below? This is basically your center position. And whenever you push your head about to your neutral position, you'll notice that you can wiggle your head left and right. I'm wiggling my head actually right now, about a good 2-3 degrees, and nothing's happening. And it is actually stuck. You see here there's no range of motion, but if you see here, I'm actually wiggling it around. So there is a dead zone set to the center, so that when your head is in a center position, it will stay centered in-game as well. And this is for moments where you've been looking around and you're just like, okay, you know, time to look ahead and look through my heads up display and I don't actually want the camera to do anything. That's basically what's happening there. If you don't like this little dead center, if you don't want it to be like that, then get rid of this dead zone right here. And you would have to do this for, you know, yaw, pitch, and roll because it's there for all of them. So that's what that is. And now you would go ahead and save this profile. Uh, if you're in the default, I don't believe you can save because the save is grayed out, so clicking and nothing's happening. But if you exit out, you will be warned that it's not saved and you can create a new profile instead. If I say yes, I'm just going to set it as test. Press OK. It's going to shut down. I'm going to restart. And boom, we're back to default. Oh, what happened there? Okay, so there's this box here that's called exclusive. If we go and select the test profile, this is the one that we changed, and now we set it to exclusive. I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on, and now it's going to be under test. So by setting it as exclusive, you'll always start it at whatever profile you have uh, last left it on. Okay, uh, before we leave, there is just two more things you need to do. Um, up here is your motion control. And down here are your quick action keys, or hotkeys. Uh, let's set the hotkeys first. So you have three different hotkeys you can choose from. You have your center, you have your position, and your pause. Pause just pauses it. You know, move your head around, nothing's going to happen. Never use that. Precision. As you can see, I can move my head around very quickly, right? And if I hit precision, I can still move my head with full range of motion, but it smooths everything out. Oh, hmm, never expected that, huh? So I always have precision turned on, and everything is nice and smoothed out for me. Uh, center just recenters your position of your head, because sometimes the track error will drift a little bit. So this is my neutral position here. I'm going to center it. Boom. Done. OK. Now, I have set them as something else uh, here in the hot keys section, uh, because I believe the default is F12, F9, and F7, and these double as uh, keys that are already in use for DCS and many other games, so I don't really like that. In DCS, you don't really use the number keypad. 
I think the number keypads, uh, 1 through 9, are used for moving your head around inside the cockpit. But since you have a track AR, you sort of don't need them anymore, do you? So I will actually use them instead. So for precision, since it's already F7 here, what I'm going to do is click on it and press keypad 7. And boom, it's keypad 7 now. Pause, I'm not going to use, but if you want to do, you can set it to keypad 9 and center position is the very very important one it's f12 on the keyboard but what i like to use is the number five on the keypad because it's on the center of the keypad and now if i press number five it centers boom but this is my neutral position let's center to that wonderful so now you can center your uh track ar without too much strain without having to alt tab out and use the buttons down here just use the hotkeys you're done okay what about the motion control so motion control actually amplify everything. As you can see, the yellow curve goes above your green curve. So if I were to turn to the right and look at my head, this is my full range motion to the right and I'm pulling like more than 360 degrees. So I leave that down to my regular, either at or just below the actual green curvature that you have set. Now the smoothness, if I turn my smoothness down, look at the earthquake that's happening. If essentially every little shake every detail is amplified here try to be shown in real time we don't want that right so increase the smoothness and it kind of creates a sort of dead zone um, you can set it to 50 and you will suffer no loss of range of motion and as you can see I can basically hold a position without too much movement there's no trickery or magic I'm just holding my neck very still. So for those of you who are having trouble just pushing your head to the right and holding it there, you're either Michael J. Fox or you just need to really focus really hard on keeping your head still. And that's all it is. I'm talking right now and I'm still keeping it relatively steady. Uh, there is one thing I should note. Tracker Air 4 is a little bit less accurate. So when I would hold it here, it would jiggle a little bit more. And I got tired of that. So I upgraded to a Track IR 5. And it has improved my stability, but as you've seen from my previous videos, uh, stability really wasn't an issue with me for my track AR. So either just my setup on my desk is pretty much perfect, and this is why I'm getting such a very good range of motion without any jaggedness or anything like that, or you guys are just doing something wrong. There's no trickery, no magic. This is no different than any other tutorial video on YouTube that you would find on how to set this up. And now that we're done with this and you have saved your profile and everything's good to go, uh, let's go ahead and start doing the zoom view. So what we're going to do here is go to our options, controls, and A10C sim. So six degrees of freedom. Google it if you don't know. But basically six degrees of freedom is your forward, back, up, down, left, right, and roll. So you get six degrees of freedom. Simple. Not all of these aircraft have it. Uh, the A-10 has it, F-15 has it. I still haven't flown these, so I don't know. The MiG-29s do not have it. They do not have six degrees of freedom. The Answer 25 I don't remember. The T, I believe, has it. And the 2733 have it, I think. And the 51s definitely have it. So the DCS aircraft have it. The Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft, only some of them have it. So I'm just going to use the A-10C as an example that has the six degrees of freedom. The joystick that I am using is a Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas, and on it I have a little friction slider to the right of the throttle. And I use this as a free axis. It is an axis because it's not a button, right? So it's like a slider or a rotary, you know? And I use that to zoom in and zoom out. So what do I mean by this? If we go into the game really quick, Okay, so when we're sitting in our cockpit, what is going to happen is when I tilt my head forward or back, you will notice that it zooms my cockpit in, but nothing happens to the outside world. The outside world is ineffected, right? So I can look towards all my gauges inside of my pit, but beyond that, nothing happens. However, when I use my little friction slider on the right of my throttle, you will notice that my zoom view is in. Ah, hey, look at that. So I can still zoom in with to my cockpit, but it also zooms the outside world. So I can zoom in and watch my wingman back there. Boom, just like that. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna go to adjust controls. And let's see, A10C real, access commands. 
In here you will notice you have your rudders, your joystick, and your throttle. And if we slide over to the right, hey, oh, hey, look, yeah, track IR and mouse is there. Never saw that before. By default, you will have nothing set here because we have, ah, zoom view, look, ah. So track IR will actually set a track IR Z axis or something like that to this, which means whenever you tilt your head forward towards the screen and back, you will actually have the zoom that you can zoom on the outside and zoom in and out. Very annoying. So when you have a track IR and you do have an access to spare and you don't want to have that happening to you, delete whatever's here for your track IR and then set whatever access you want for your zoom view. Uh, I have it in my throttle, so I set my joy slider one for my throttle. The other thing that I do is you shouldn't have noticed that this is the center position of my slider. Uh, it is actually a little bit further back than what is in game. I think in game it's going to be like something over here. And I never like this. It's too zoomed in for me. I wanted to have a little bit more view so I can see the HSI at the bottom down here. Um, but let's say you want to set it so that the middle position, the neutral position of your axis that you set up is like back here. This is too much for me. But let's say I want it over there. The way I do this is by adjusting controls, axis commands, selecting this and going to axis tune. I change it to a slider and I move the curvature back. So right here is what I have it set to. By default it is at zero and my center position is in the center of the slide. But by setting it back here where I have it, uh, it zooms your camera out by default in the center position. But let's say I want it back even more because I want to see like my joystick, then I'll push it even further back and if I press OK this is the neutral position now. And now this is all the way back, and this is all the way forward. This is obviously too much, but I'm just using it as an example. So I'm going to change this back to my 18, and that should be it, gentlemen. There's nothing else to teach you beyond that. So I hope you guys learned something, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye.